right, boys. Let's cover the new cards. New cards conversation time. First card first. Field promotion. Next time you play a unit this round, grant it scout. It's now an elite. I think this elite tag is interesting, but it's meh. It's not that in, not that important. Dude, it's, it's, it's the scout thing. You want to give stuff scout. Now, what do you want to give scout to? Quick attack units are OP with scout. Teemo is good with scout. Attack units are good with scout. Ch Diana with scout is kind of scary. I got to say, dude, it's, especially when she levels up. That's some serious removal. That's a scary card with scout. Um... Fizz can be very scary with scouts because that's every dude. Yo, what about Fizz scouts, dude? Holy smokes. That's a scary one because Fizz can get out of control. He's so hard to remove. Like, that's a very good buff for Fizz. You put that with, like, Misfortune and you have a very scary aggro deck. I I'd be scared of that. Fizz Misfortune, for example. It goes very well with any Misfortune deck because you want to be able to double attack whenever you want. Lucian is pretty good. Draven is amazing. Draven double attacking is giving you massive amounts of axes, and there's a lot of good ways to use axes in the game. <laughs> All right. What else do we have? No, it doesn't work. She only she can only summon stuff once, so unfortunately, it doesn't work here. LeBlanc can be meh, not bad. Misfortune, Dex with her, not necessarily on Misfortune, but Dex with Misfortune. Zed is one of the best, maybe the best. Zed might be the best one, actually. Out of all of them, I think Zed might be the scariest. Really disgusting. Lissandra, no. Jinx is not horrible, but it's you don't want to play Jinx with Demacia. Ash, not... Eh. Double Freeze with Ash. Are you really playing Ash with Demacia? I'm not sure. Nocturne can be scary, but again, I'm not sure. Renekton can be pretty scary if you have like you can you can level Renekton in, in literally one turn I skip Riven Riven can be very scary. Yes, dude. That card is good with so many units Shivana is, can be scary. Sivir can be scary as hell uh, Dude, that's a that's that, that, that's a really good imagine even Lee Sin dude imagine a leveled up Lee Sin like level Lee Sin with Scout that's crazy. You don't even need Overwhelm anymore. That's so scary, dude. Talia is not even the worst in the world. Trundle can be very scary. Vi is super scary. Um, Anivia is meh. Hecarim can be super... Dude, it's amazing with everything. And then you even have other units. Like you put it on three on Legion Marauder. I, I'm scared, man. There's a lot of good cards you can do that with. <laughs> Battering Ram. Battering Ram, because there's a lot of good Noxus units that can deal with that. Dude, Battering Ram with Scout? Holy smokes. The new cards we've seen. Guys, we've seen some pretty scary new cards as well. Like, that new 10 cost is, that I'm going to talk about in a bit is scary as well. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I think it's an extremely strong card. Now, with that said, will it see play? When I say will it see play, I mean in, in Tier 1 decks. Will it see play in tier one decks? No, it'll see play for sure. But in tier one. Or will they be good tier two decks? I'm going to say good chance. But I'm not going to say definitely. And the reason I'm not going to say definitely is it really depends how the meta is shaped. If meta is running removal, this is actually kind of bad. Because if meta is really high on cards like Vengeance really high on cards that remove units per outright that's um that just makes you you lose two for one every single time and you lose two extra mana for the removal like you're giving extra value to removal so it depends what the meta feels like it really does you play this on zed and they do a mystic shot you just lost five mana for two for example like that that's why this card um it doesn't give defensive layers and it makes removal so much better it can be um it can be bad in like for example this versus let's say Ezreal Draven right this versus Ezreal Draven is actually a really bad card 
Because Ezreal Draven is literally designed just to remove stuff off the board nonstop. How do you protect units after you've spent two mana? Like, let's say you want to play this with a three drop. You're down to one mana in the best case. Let's say you saved three mana, spell mana, and you drop your three drop and you drop this on top of it. You're down to one mana. Chain Vest saves it, sure, but what if they do get excited? If they know you're running Chain Vest, what if they drop get excited on it? That's still a three mana removal for a five mana card and two cards on top of that. It's, um, what if they go Thermo Beam for, for three? You can't Nopify on top, you don't have the mana for it. The problem is you don't have the mana to Nopify. Like, you're, you don't have infinite mana to, to protect it. So, overall, it's a little bit scary to play early. It's stronger later when you have enough mana to protect the stuff. But then again, you only have three spell mana. So you, if you want to play it on curve, like on a six drop on mana six, it's a scary thing to play because usually they're going to get a big advantage just by removing the unit. So yeah, that's my views on this. Almost always, you want to play buffs reactively to removal. That's why buffs are so strong. That's why things like plus two plus two is so strong. It's because they use removal and you get it out of range. And you just play a 2-mana 8-2, for example. That's why things like um, things that give buffs are that strong. Because it gives you a very strong um, protection from removal. You almost never want to pre-buff. That's, like, that's like why people don't play Battle Fury immediately if the opponent's running a deck that runs Vengeance. Because it's, they wait for you to do blocks and then to commit mana before they use their Battle Fury on the right unit. So... Overall, this is um this is scary to use. I am not sure if there's going to be a tier one deck using it, but there's a chance there will. I say there's a decent chance this might see play in tier one decks, but I'm not sold. I I will say 95% chance this will see play in good tier two decks. For tier one, I'm not sure. Fizz is better than Zed, I guess. In that way, yes, because you have ways to protect Fizz from removal. Unless it's stuff like Avalanche where you don't. So, does that make sense, guys? Is that a weird take? One unit and pass, the opponent assigns a blocker and you burst out the field promotion. Does the attack become a scout? No, it doesn't. Because this, you have to play this before summoning the unit. This is, you play this, then you summon a unit, that's the unit that gets the buff. This is on your next summoned unit. So you have to pre-buff it. Next played unit, so you can't even summon units. Which is fair, which is fine. So yeah, I'm not sure if it's a tier 1 card, but I think it's a really cool card. It's going to make some very specific archetypes happen. I'm looking... You know you know what's scary? I'm going to show you what's really scary here. Uh, field Promotion with Zed and Cataclysm. Because Cataclysm is amazing with Zed. And you can use Cataclysm off of the Zed, and it gives you Rally on defensive turns as well. This was already good with Zed, because Zed is very good at removing units, because it has quick attack, if you can buff the Zed. If you have Scout on top of that, which is going to be your main combo with Zed anyway, double attacking every turn, Cataclysm actually gives you Rally on defensive turns, so that's a little bit scary. That's a cool idea. Zed and Fiora, yeah. It's a, it's a cool idea, overall. Alright. Teemo with this is a must. I mean, that's his job. He's a Scout Kappa HD. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Let's put Timo Demacia. I'm maybe it's playable. Maybe it is. I look forward to it. Alright. Next card to look at. Yeti. Abominable Guardian. No, okay, I'm just kidding. I know you want to talk about the Poro. People have been begging me to speak about the Poro for a while. Listen, we'll talk about the Poro. All right, first of all, he's a grumpy little... He's, he's a cute, grumpy little boy. Dude, he's so grumpy. I love him. Fabled Poro! Dude, he's so grumpy and, and angry, but you just want to cuddle him. Type 1 if you just want to cuddle him against his will. I know it's unethical to cuddle someone against their will, but he, him... I, I You know? You want to you pinch his cheeks. You want to pinch his cute little cheeks while he's grumpy. Just want to pinch... All right, all right. I got it out of my system. I got it out of my system. <sighs> Fabled Poro. When I'm summoned, grant all ally Poros a random keyword. In Freljord, which is the best region to be in probably for Poros. I like it, man. I like it. More Poro support. It makes the six drop so much better because you're more likely to get spell shield on it. You're more likely to get Scout on it. You're more likely to get Elusive on it. 
That's not... Listen, Poro decks are memes anyway, man. Poro support is not bad. 2-5 stats is pretty defensive. If you have one Poro snacks up already, I mean, a 3-6 is pretty scary in terms of stats. So I'm down for this. I'm down for more Poros. That's never a bad thing. He's not grumpy, just focused. <laughs> That's what they all think. So, listen. We've already had one decent Poro deck, which was Lux Poros. I don't see why not. This over Bannerman. Yeah, but Bannerman is an Allegiance card chat. All right. Very cool Fable Poro. I like to see it. Uh, not really that much to say. Just really, really cute. Let's go to the next card. Abominable... Abominable... Abomin... Help me, chat. Abominable... <laughs> okay, listen, listen, listen. Abominable... Abominable... Guardian. I'm so good at this game, dude. Holy crap. I'm so good at this game. Abominable Guardian. Ah, just flows off the tongue so easy. So easy. Abominable, abominable, abom abominable Guardian. Round start. It's an eight mana cost five, five. Round start. If you have two plus yetis, summon me from hand and create a copy of me in your deck. Play, draw a yeti. I don't know, dude. I don't know. The, okay, so the, the, the summon from hand is kind of cool. But the fact that this is a play effect kind of sucks. Because you never want to play this in the first place. Like, you don't want to play this. Do you? I guess it's cool that it has this as a bonus. Like, this is just, this is just to um, get another 5 up on board really fast. It's good you can open attack with it. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's not that bad. Like, it's, it's playable. It works with... Oh, it works with Baby Yeti. That's a good point. Okay, that makes it better, dude. The fact that it works with Baby Yeti makes it better. I forgot about that. I was thinking how to make this work, but that's a lot better. Oh my god. That's that's a Watcher Summon. What if you have like three of these in your hand? Yo. Yo. What, do you, what if you have multiple of these in hand? And like, imagine... Imagine... That's, that's spicy, dude. On mana 4, you could theoretically have 3 8 drops. Well, you can't get a 4th one, right? Oh, wait. You create a copy of him in your deck. You could theoretically get a really fast watcher, dude. That's kind of scary, dude. Who needs Trundle anymore? Good point. <laughs> you could actually summon watcher with only these guys if you're able to get enough copies of them. And the crazy thing is there's a card that draws yetis. You can actually draw yetis with this, theoretically, but I think that's a bad play. This is going to be played for sure with it. Yeti is going to be played for sure with it. I could see this being played sometime, not always. Tall Tales, maybe. I don't know, man. It's a cool idea to play it with Watcher. I kind of like that. Smart Chat. This could be a Watcher Activator. I still think you play Trundle, though, as your second champion. Unless... No! Listen, chat! You can get these in hand and play them for free. You don't even need to pay 8 mana. You Fading Memories, the first one that drops, and then they're going to auto-summon from your hand the next turn. No! Because this is in your hand! This, this, they all go to your hand. You do like double fading memories once it's on board, the first one, and they auto summon the next turn. You get to watch your next turn. No! <laughs> it's actually doable, dude. You can enter of improvement as well, but you can't play it if you, that's only if you play P and Z. Dude, dude, I'm scared, chat. Oh my. Well, you, 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 oh no, dude. No, 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 no. <laughs> they auto summon next turn, dude. They auto-summon next turn. As long as you get one on board, you can just copy them in your hand and you start auto-summoning from your hand. Dude, yo, that's scary. You might actually play P and Z with, 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 Lis oh no. Okay, listen, I'm, I'm just going to the next card because that's, that's, I'm actually scared, dude. There's going to be some very early watchers happening. Holy smokes. Stalking Shadows. There's a lot of ways to do it, but Jesus Christ, that's scary, dude. They'll nerf it to 7 cost. 
<laughs> That's, that might be a nerf, dude. Oh my lord. Okay, listen, listen. Let's go to the next card. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass up. Keep in mind, this was designed before they even released Lissandra. This was already made, right? Maybe that's what they expected um, Watcher to look like. This was already designed pre Lissandra. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty pretty crazy. That might actually work. It says this card is trash, but Swim and Mogwai loves it. Well, now that I think about Lissandra, I think it might be um, a very interesting way to build Lissandra per se. I think it's really cool because here's the thing about iterative improvement: it's very good with one cost Yetis. We were saying this card, but like, listen, let's not um, let's not meme. It's very good. A three mana six six is uh, not a joke. So. It's not like you need to play it on the eight drop. That's a very good target for it. Anyway, very spicy, very spicy card. Scarier than I first expected it to be. Now that I thought about TLC. Next card, Defiant Dance. This absolutely sucks, right? Oh wait. Oh no. No. We. No, it's it's not a friendly unit. It's enemy units too. Listen, it's enemy units as well. It Yes, it is slow, but it's a four mana cost card. That gives you Blade Dance. Listen, this is a good card. I, I'm sorry, I thought this was friendly units only. No, this is, a, this is a scary card. This is a temp... Dude, after turn five, any unit they play, this gives you value. And if you're playing a Blade Dance deck... It gives you massive value. Slow doesn't matter if it's slow chat. It gives you blade dance. The, how does how, how do you guys imagine? Listen, this is how the game plays. Listen, chat, t -t 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 time out. You're playing versus Demacia. They attack. They they attack you with twenty units. You block, 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 block. You get radiant guardian out. Not only do they dance blade dance, but they remove your radiant guardian off the board. Like. This gets rid of the annoying blockers that you can't deal with. This gets rid of the Fioras that are blocking. This gets rid of the Radiant Guardians that are blocking. This gets rid of that one blocker that is saving you from the matchup. There's only a couple of ways you can beat Blade Dance decks. There's only a few ways to do it. It's by having good blockers that get high value by blocking. This not only removes it, but it Blade Dances again, which when we know when we have like literally... Um, what's his face? Azir with two landmarks is um, immense value. So, Homecoming is better? Not necessarily. Why is Homecoming better? Homecoming doesn't blade dance. That's the thing. Homecoming can also be denied by killing a unit you're homecoming or destroying the landmark you're using the homecoming. Mogwai said it's bad. I think this is scary. Can't be played during... It doesn't matter. This is just one more rally. It doesn't matter if it can't be played during combat chat. It's hard. To, only deny, only deny denies it. I think this is better than Homecoming. I'm not even kidding. I think this is better than Homecoming. You're, yeah, you guys are underestimating the Blade Dance part. You guys are just seeing it as recall a unit for four. Of course, in a non-Blade Dance deck, this is this is worse than Homecoming. In a normal deck that doesn't use Blade Dance mechanics brokenly, this is worse than Homecoming every time. But in a Blade Dance deck, I'm sorry. This is better. This is this is gonna make um, Azir Aurelia stronger, I think. You replace Homecoming with this and that's it. You're good. It wasted deny at the right time. It's a buff to Zorelia. I agree. You can remove any unit now that blocks. Before, Braum was very annoying. Fiora was very annoying. And all of those cards, you had to remove it with Homecoming. Which is which doesn't give you tempo. This removes a unit, but also attacks in the same instance as it removes it. So you can't replay the unit to block. Do you, do you guys not understand how strong that is? You're attacking while tell, but before the attack goes through, before they can block, you're removing their main blocker. It's insane. It's the same. Like, do you guys not realize this is blade dance? But by the way, that unit right there is not allowed to block this turn. It goes back to your hand. It's not like you're removing the unit and then you attack afterwards after they replay it. You can't replay it, whatever the card is you're blocking with. That's why it's so insane. You guys are, you guys are, I think you're, you're off the mark if you think this is bad. This is a removal with a burst attack right after it. Literally. This removes a unit and then it burst, burst attacks. I mean, it's, it's really strong. That's like 8 damage to face instantly. And if it removes a big unit, what do you do? This, that's, that's, I think it's bad. 
Well, I disagree with you, Shermie. That's because Mogwai said it's bad. I disagree with Mogwai then. Listen, chat. You guys are you guys are saying I can't disagree with Godwai? Chat. I'm sorry, chat, but Godwai literally spent a week on Twitter screaming at us that that where is it? Where is it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, chat, but he spent a week telling Targon's peak needs to be nerfed or he's quitting the game. A, a week on Twitter when this when this first came out telling us that this this was ruining the game and this needed to get nerfed before the game is ruined and there's no coming back. And I, maybe you guys were not around for that, but he's not always right, chat. He's not always right. I don't know if you guys were around back then, but when this card came out, Mogwai said he's not going to play the ladder anymore because it's oppressive and Targon's Peak ruins the game. And this card needs to be nerfed to the ground. This had to be 7 cost, I think, was his take. I don't remember, but... Anyway. So if you guys think he's always right, you also agree that Targon's Peak is the strongest card in the game and it needs to be nerfed immediately. Listen. First of all, I think Mogwai has a, a lot of really cool takes. I think he's a pretty smart dude. But nobody is infallible. Everyone makes mistakes. If Mogwai thinks that card sucks, well, I disagree with him. I think the card is good. So, while he might be right, he might also be wrong. All right, let's get to the next one. That said, I, I agree with like 80% of... 80, 85% of the things Mogwai complains about, I agree with them. Nobody's always right exactly. All right, Starlit Epiphany. Burst... Three, invoke. If you have a Celestial Ally, replace your deck with 20 copies of the Holy Infinite. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Listen. Is it really a meme card? Let's be honest. Is it really a meme card? Or maybe it's not. First of all, if the Watcher obliterates your deck, this card will re refill your deck. So you don't die to Watcher. On one turn. This is a direct counter to Watcher for one turn only, but it's good enough. Second of all, this the fact that every card invokes means there's a good chance you find a do you know how many invocable cards can kill the Watcher? You can get an Equinox from this or one of the Behold the Infants. You can get an obliterate card, you can get um there's a lot of ways you can kill the Watcher after you play this. Okay. Yeah, it replaces, but with 20 copies. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how many cards you have in your deck. You have zero cards in your deck. It replaces your deck with 20 copies. It just puts 20 copies in there. So this is very good anti-mill. It destroys Maokai. Yes. Furthermore, I actually think this could be a very cool... Maybe... Is it possible that this is a card you play in decks that run out of, run out of steam? Just as like a two of... Just put it in there. Like what if you play some kind of weird aggro deck? Where if you finally run out of steam, you just drop this and then you become a control deck afterwards. Maybe not. I don't know. It gets rid of mushrooms. True. It doesn't draw. That's the problem. But I'm I'm not I'm not thinking of that line, Chad. I'm thinking something like um like what if you have like Hexcore Foundry in your in your on your board, or if you have a Guiding Touch or two in your hand, or well not not a Guiding Touch, but maybe like a Pale Cascade in your hand that can give you a couple of because Invokes are all really strong. It's like. It's like an endgame kind of thing. What if you have... I don't know. You play that into Augmented Experiment. I don't know, dude. It's, 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 a, weird, it's a weird idea. I kind of like those ideas where a deck can become something else randomly that nobody expects. Karina. It's pretty cool with Karina to an extent, yeah. All right. Overall, kind of fun. I'm going to definitely make decks with it for fun. We'll try it out. Don't know, though, what else there is to say about it. Guaranteed allegiance. Something you miss. True. True. But then you're playing it in a in an invoke deck with karma, maybe. I wonder how good that is with karma. With a leveled karma. Because like you can reshuffle your karma back in the deck. I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Cool card though, overall. I like it. The fact that it's a burst invoke is really cool as well. And you don't always have to get this off. You have no celestial allies, so. Yeah, why not? Why not? It has some possibilities for sure. It can even be a one-up just to counter to counter instant turn obliterates. It has a lot of cool ideas. All right, next card. Heavens Aligned. Now I saw this card. Doesn't it suck? Or am I missing something? Like, guys, help me out here. What is this card for? I know you watch other streamers. What are their takes on this? Because I, I don't see it. Good for Nightfall Aggro. 
Like, I guess you activate Nightfall with this. Like, is this a Nick Makes Play card? I feel like that's like a Diana card and that's it. Like, boom. You create a Nightfall card that can go out in your Nightfall deck and you just drop Diana right after. Like, you just use it to activate Nightfall, right? Like, I don't think you're ever making Daybreak cards. Day-Night deck. Ravoon. Yeah, I mean, Ravoon is kind of cool. It gives you card draw with Ravoon, but maybe, maybe. It's actually not bad with Ravoon. That's a good point. It levels up Leona. Yeah, I can see this. Yeah, yeah, okay, I can, I can see it. Those are both deck archetypes I don't play. I really don't have much to say about this. It's pretty high RNG. I think it's a cool card. I've changed my mind. I don't know if it sucks. It's not particularly exciting, but it's cool. This is uh, this is also a stun with... Yeah, okay, sure. Okay, I'll take it. Can this make champions? I'm not sure. Can it make champions or not? I don't think it can. Because a, a lot of cards that do random can't make champions. It should. I don't think it can make champions. So. Alright. Cool card overall. But I'm not going to spend much time talking about it. It's pretty evident what it does, right? Next. Atakan, bringer of ruin. I like this card, dude. I don't know. I, I feel like... It's, it's such a cool card. With Spectral Matron, this might be a little bit scary. Because Spectral Matron drops this on 8. You have an 11-12 Ephemeral unit attacking with Overwhelm. That's pretty scary. So with Matron... um, That's a scary hit. He adds... Yeah, because the Matron adds its own damage to this, right? The Matron adds to this. So he's hitting for at least 11. Oh, all allies plus 5 himself. Wait. Oh... Yo, that's scary. That, that, dude, that's a big 8-drop. The fact that if you drop this with Matron on 8, that's literally hitting for 16 damage overwhelm on mana 8. Does not have the same impact? Okay, so show me. It doesn't have the same board presence, but you can't chump block this. The problem with Matron C3 is you have no overwhelm anywhere. If you hush it, you're... Well, it stays alive for next turn after it gets hushed, yeah, but... It's not necessarily worse. It depends what you're playing against, really. But the fact that this has Overwhelm, and you have to deal with it that turn, and you haven't lost it because you still have a 6-6 six, six for Matron, it's kind of scary. Equinox is good, dude! You have a 5-12 on board if this gets Equinoxed. Right? Because it's ephemeral. You're keeping it alive. It's, like, it's not that bad. A 5-12 is scary on the board if you play it with Matron. Yeah, and it is permanent. Every time it attacks... This with Rally in... Well, there's only one Rally in this color, which is the 5 cost card. You can play that on mana 13. On mana 10, you can play Matron into this, into attack, into Rally, into attack as well. You can give it Scout, but then you can't play Matron. I think mana 10 is too late to play this, unfortunately. I don't think this can play mana 10. I think you need to cheat this out with Matron. Rally Ephemerally, yeah, good point. Good point. So yeah, I'm going to say this, this sort of has to be with Matron. I don't know if this can play on its own as a mana 10 drop. Targon's Peak Aesol. That's scary, dude. That's a scary Targon's Peak card as well. Yo, that maybe. Maybe. I can see it. I like the card. I think it can it can it can go, do really scary things. Shred of Narc just gives it spell shield and more of that, yeah. Can Matron be nerfed already? God River's right all along. What do you mean? What happened? Targon's Peak will be busted. <laughs> <laughs> True. He was just thinking way ahead of us, dude. All right, all right. I like that. Nice. This is better than Farron at the moment. It's the same. No, because Farron's 8 drop. That You can't compare 8 mana and 10 mana. Two worlds apart. Very cool card with Matron. I don't know if it can see play outside of Matron. But with Matron, I think this is playable. It's a scary... Because you're, you're playing Matron with Noxus, which means it's more of an aggro deck. I, I like the idea behind it. This, this wins the game on one swing a lot of the time. So, I'm going to keep my eyes out open for ideas for this deck. All right. Thorned Blade, four mana burst. Give it ally plus five plus zero this round. Can we all agree this card kind of sucks? Why would you ever play this over one mana plus three attack? I'm curious. If this granted plus five attack, that would be broken. If this granted five attack, it would be actually broken. But, um, yeah. For one turn, it would be really strong if it granted. Because you have um, certain Overwhelm cards that have um, Spell Shield. Because of two different cards, it would be a bit broken. But 
Counters freezes in a LeBlanc deck. I don't care what it counters. So does a one mana cost card that buffs plus three. It's too expensive. All right. Nerfing karma generated cards. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Let's, uh, well, I'm going to skip over this. I, I think it's not a very good card. It's actually a good card. All right. Let's hear it. Why? Rek'Sai and Thorn Blade instant level. I mean, it's too expensive, dude. It's like plus two damage, but you're spending four mana. You're spending three mana to give plus two attack. When you spend one mana for three, you can spend four for five. Why? It's for pushing lethal. Yeah, but you got you got better ones for that. Riven plus ten. Too expensive, I think. Maybe, maybe I don't know, man. I, I don't see it. I think the price is too high. If it was three mana, it would be in a pretty sweet spot. Everyone wants me to look at two first. So sorry to back one and then three. I I'm gonna look at this, this, then this. And how it would I'm gonna go used. backwards from the order you guys suggested. I'm gonna go three, humor. one, then two, sure because back. it seems Imagine. this is the most excited. Humor, this is the second most excited. KDK. This is the third. Okay, the twisted tree line, landmark three cost. Shadow Elves landmark. What does it do? Once I've seen three fearsome allies attack. All right, next card, Astral Fox. Let's have a look at this Astral Fox. Four mana fearsome. Three, three. I'm already scared. Play. Kill an ally to deal three to the enemy nexus. That's not horrible. Listen, that's Love not horrible. I'll tell you why. Fearsome is work. actually kind of scary in um in Thresh Nasus. This gives you a slay. You always have a lot of slay units. It pushes phase damage, plus it's a fearsome attacker, and you already have problems with blocking fear enough fearsomes. That's not bad. I can see this being good in, in Thresh Nasus. It buffs it buffs Suzanne. It gives Thresh a kill counter. It ups your slays. It knocks in Fervor's face for all these zero ones you want to get rid of anyway. That's decent. It's like a it's like a weird Doom Beast. The effect is not instant, I'm aware. But like, are you really gonna spend a removal on a zero one? To save like that's that's value on its own. If it's forcing you to use removal on a zero one. So if it's forcing you to use removal on the two drop one one, right? Like that's value in itself if it's getting denied. So that's 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 not a that's not a bad card. It's not like some OP card, but it just adds more to the archetype. Hey, thank you, X Man, for the kind words and the 100 bits, my dude. Thank you very much. Last but not least. Alright, now that we've talked about the Twisted Tree Line, let's talk about Astral Fox and its ability, Symmetry in Stars. 4 mana, 3-3 three, three with Fearsome, kill an ally to deal 3 to the enemy Nexus, play effect, that's not bad. Like, if you think about this, in, in like, Thresh Nasus decks, this ability, it has reach, it slays one of your own units, and it's a fearsome. And generally speaking, decks have trouble having enough fearsome blockers because Nasus is fearsome. The 4 3 with Challenger is fearsome. And now this is fearsome. Overall, deal 3 damage is a noxious fervor off your unit, which is usually one of the 0 1s or the 1 1 2 drop. I like it. I think it has some actual, uh, actual usability. I don't think it's particularly broken, but it adds a little bit of extra zest, a little bit of spice to the decks that already use this kind of archetype. So. I think, I think this deck has potential. I really do. What do you guys think? You guys agree? Good. All right. Well, that is it for these two cards. That is the last cards we're going to cover in this reveal. Listen, Tams knows his job. He's already walking on, 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 
on on a thin rope. What what is the saying? Walking on thin ice. Tams would never do what he's not supposed to do. <laughs> Alphabetical order. First things first, we have Bloodbait. Create a Snapjaw Swarm on top of your deck. What what is this? What card is this, chat? Oh, it's the two mana zero two that um attacks when it's when it's cast. Not only that, but it has lurk. So it can guarantee lurk on a turn. And if it's top deck, it gives you lurk. That's not bad. That's really not that bad. Would you play it though? I guess you would. Because the Snapjaw is also buffed from Lurks. It's not a bad card. I mean, it's only good in a Lurk deck, but it's really not bad. Would you play this with a Misfortune if you never played Lurk? Just to have activation for attacks? Yes or no? No? It's a 3 mana semi rally card. Yeah, you would play a 0 2 as well on top of this. Dude, I really think that this. Lurk pack, this plus Misfortune plus Azir might be a thing. What do you guys think about that? Misfortune, Azir, and the free attack dudes. How strong is that? That sounds a little bit scary. Even if you, you just you just skip the Shireen. No, you, you can go for full Lurk, Azir, Misfortune. Like full on Lurk, because Azir is... Uh, Azir is Shirima, so we have Shirima and Bilgewater. That could be a thing. Like, you don't have Blade Dance, but you have the, you have six units that attack freely. And you have the entire Lurk package on top of that. Current MF decks aren't good when you don't have MF. Yeah, but that's why you have Azir now. And you have Lurk on top of that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you can't skip Rek'Sai. I don't know. It's debatable. I think this is a good card though in every Lurk package. It's a good top deck. Is it possible to make a full deck of Lurks with no misses? I think it's not, right? But missing Lurk feels so bad. Somebody said at the moment we have 33 cards. Wait, what? That's impossible. We already have 11 cards with Lurk. Really? That's not bad. Maybe we can hit it then. Maybe it's possible. All right, so for this card, not really much to say. It's a decent top deck because it gives you Lurk. It guarantees a Lurk on the next one, so it's like it's almost like the zero cost predict card in that way. I like it. I think it's pretty solid. Next on the list, Red Thin Hammer Snout. Two mana, one, two. Granted enemy vulnerable with Lurk and is a Lurker. How do we feel about that? I mean, I'm comparing this to uh to this, like. Sort of to this, because you can't choose what to grant to, but. The stats are kind of weak. It is a Lurk. It's a targeted vulnerable. It's a 2-2 most of the time at the very worst. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not a bad card. Yeah, I like it. I like it because this is a targetable. If this was like strongest enemy randomly, I don't think I would enjoy it, but. Being able to choose to kill off the main, like killing Jinx with this, for example, is great. Killing elusive units is great. Killing... Yeah, this is pretty good. It's pretty much a pseudo removal, which you kind of need. Because if you're playing this deck, if you run something like actual removal, that's a card that might not proc Lurk. This is a removal that does proc Lurk. So, I like it. I think it's uh, pretty solid. What L? There's no L card here, chat. The list starts with a T. Next card on the list is... Ripper Bay. When allies attack, discard the top card of your deck if it doesn't have Lurk. And this has Lurk. I don't know if this card fits, because I feel like every one of your cards is going to be Lurk, and you don't want to spend one mana doing nothing. I'm not sure. And if you're putting cards that don't have Lurk, you kind of want to draw those cards some of the time. I don't know if you want to discard them. The real question is if it discards before the Lurk proc. I, I mean, it should. Otherwise, it sucks, right? You know, honestly, I think I wouldn't play this in my deck. Oh, boy. Let me try to finish this off. Ripper's Bay. Somebody said it could go with Deep. Listen, if you if you end up discarding a Nautilus with this, like, that's literally GG, right? 
you lose your game. So I don't know if I can agree with that. I don't know, dude. I, I feel like this is not that good with deep. It can discard champions exactly. So I don't think you take your chances. I don't think you can. In before you discard all three Nautiluses and have zero win cons. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. They're asking me to play this in deep. Last last time I checked, Nautilus is not a not a lurker, so it's a problem. Please listen to obliterate. Wait, it, it literally says toss. Discard the top card of your deck if it doesn't have. Toss, discard. Wait, sorry, no, that, I didn't mean toss. I meant discard, chat. You know what I meant. You know what I meant. You understood me, right? I know it's not toss, chat. You're correct. In my head, I was just saying discard with toss. You're, you're, they're different mechanics, though. True. <sighs> it's not discard, it's obliterate. It says discard, dude. Stop it, chat. Oh, wait. Mobile Lytics says obliterate. Wait, what? So where does this come from? This is, a, this is from literally Legends of Runeterra Twitter. Wait, so who has it wrong? Mobile Lytics or the actual Twitter page of Legends of Runeterra? Oh, they updated it later. Okay, well, listen. It's literally the same thing. Discard. Oh, wait. It's actually not the same thing because if you discard the card, you could play with PNZ, which I was thinking about, actually. Playing a full-on discard deck with Jinx and stuff and playing this. And then if it gets discarded, it actually gets played onto board. So if this is of literary and not discard, then it doesn't work with PNZ as well. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. That makes a difference. Not that you were to really play this in a discard deck, but it does make a difference. So anyway, Ripper's Bay. I honestly don't think I would play it because I think there's going to be a lack of draw. Because your only real draw in this Lurker deck so far is Rek'Sai. It, draws, it gives you basically three random um, Lurkers. And most Lurkers are pretty cheap anyway. I feel like you're going to run out of cards really fast. So a card that does literally nothing, sure, it helps you enable Lurk. But you're going to be very Lurk heavy anyway. You're going to be like 35 plus Lurk, right? I don't know. I think this is not that great. What have other streamers said about it so far? Do streamers like it? I feel like I'm, I wouldn't play it. It does make Lurk more high percent chance to hit. But anyway, I'm not a huge fan. All right, next card. We have Sharkling. One mana, one, two, Lurk. With no Fearsome. I feel like it's a bad card. Is it just me, chat? I feel like it's... Uh, I don't, I, I, maybe it's a 2-2, two, two, maybe. Is it, though? Like, it just gets chump blocked by everything. And it doesn't really do much. It's a horrible top deck. It doesn't block anything. It's, it's meh. Like, you'll put it in if you need more early game, which I doubt you do. You'll put it in if you need more Lurk, which I doubt you do. It's just not my cup of tea. It's a chump blocker, but it's not. Like, what does it trade with? Literally gets killed by most 2-2s two that are 1-drops. Is 2-2 two -two Cithri a bad card? No. But that's because Cithri can block on mana 1. This can't block on mana 1. I'm not a fan of Sharkling. Yeah, this will be like a 5-2 for 1 in a few turns. That's, that's true. I mean, maybe you play it in a full-on Lurk deck. I mean, all of these cards, you're talking about full-on Lurk decks. I'm not sure. I feel like the other one-drop is better. How many one-drops do you want to run? I guess you want to run a lot of one-drops because you do want to hit Lurk if you're attacking on odds. So I guess you do want to play six one-drops if you attack on odds just to make sure you can find a one-drop because every extra Lurk makes a big difference. So yeah, sure. I can see this being played. I like that. I, I like it. I, I, I can see this being good. I can see this seeing play. You need load, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe the C play. Sure, I'll give you that. Not really much to say. We've already discussed very similar cards. I think the other one drop is way better. The one one with fearsome just seems way better than this. And last but not least, Latist. What does Latist have for us? Getting a lot of units out with Lurk procs to get out of hand pretty quickly. It could, yes, I agree. Latist, zero mana, bilge water. It's slow, though, so it doesn't work well with uh, Fizz. Grant an enemy vulnerable. If it already has vulnerable, the strongest ally starts a free attack. Yo, that's pretty good, brother. Amazing with Misfortune. Amazing with Renekton. Amazing with Scouts, because that gives you a rally. It literally rallies if you play this with Scouts. That's card is nuts, and it's a zero mana proc alert and a free attack. 
Yes. It's pretty nutty. Return of the scouts. Lurk can only proc once per round, though. True. True, but you do this on, like, on, on the opponent's attacking turn, right? To get the value out of it. Because, like, you can play, for example, Redfin Hammer Snout into this on mana 2. And all of a sudden, you, you trade and you proc Lurk on the opponent's... I mean, it seems good to me. That's a very good card. Worst case scenario is you're just granting vulnerable randomly. And it's still good because it's grant. Even if you don't kill it, it keeps the vulnerable. Zero cost vulnerable is very good. This is good with Azarelia. Is it? How? That This is Bilgewater, brother. Oh, this is good to beat Azarelia. Yes, against it. 100% agree. 100% agree. I mean, Twisted Fate's already good. Uh, Harpoon is already very good. The list actually just fits kind of decently. I like it. This costs nothing exactly. Isn't Bilgewater an awful region, though? I wouldn't say awful. Um, Harpoon adds a lot to it. Definitely. Yeah, I agree with you, Wrecked Havoc. Zero cost mana proc a lurk and free attack. Mo is definitely quite strong. Overall, cool reveals. Listen, I really can't put a huge, huge perfect read on this until I see what Pike does. I'm really curious how he's going to affect But so far, Lurker is looking like a very good aggro region. Because they have two overwhelm units that hit very hard. The champion is overwhelm as well, which hits like a like a truck. This is going to be fun. It's kind of scary. They're aggro 100%. Of course they are. For all of those who can't read this language, it says the following. It says the following. Play effect. Summon Shen. That's Shen, by the way, if you guys didn't know. When an, when an ally gains barrier, give a quick attack. No, double attack. Give a double attack. Draw Shen. I mean, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you guys know what I meant. When play effect, draw Shen. When an ally gets barrier, give a double attack. I'm so good at this, dude. I'm so good at this. It's a Shen boat, basically. Wait, is there an English version? I don't want to. I don't want to mess this up. Wrong. It's not wrong, Chad. I'm never wrong. Oh, it's a summon. It's not a play. All right, listen. So maybe I was wrong. Maybe it was a summon effect, not a play effect. When I'm summoned, draw Shen. Allies with barrier have double attack. That's actually a big deal. You know why? Because you can remove the double attack by removing the barrier. That's a big deal. Okay, never mind. I was, I was, I was absolutely wrong. All of a sudden, like, Vile Feast is like, well, no more double attack for you. Play is yellow. Rookie mistake. <laughs> All right, Con. It was a rookie mistake. Counterable? Yeah. So, it's still a very cool card. But then again, listen. I can't believe they made an Ionia boat. And they gave it to Shen instead of Yasuo. Like, after all us players, viewers, fans have begged for. They're like, you know what? We have heard you. We will make an Ionia boat for Shen. I mean, that's what the public has been begging for all this time, a Shen boat. We've been, we've been begging for a Shen boat this whole time. And they finally heard us, and they're giving us a Shen boat in Ionia. I mean, in all seriousness, I have a feeling like Shen doesn't even know how to swim. I can't believe they would give him a boat, dude. Listen, does that look like a dude who can swim? For some reason, I feel like with all this armor, he would just sink. He looks extremely dense. I think he would sink immediately. Look at all this armor. Look how heavy the armor is. There's no way for him. There's no way he can float with this. Look at that. He haven't... There's no way he's floating. I, I feel like this weighs like 500 pounds. He doesn't need to swim. He can teleport. That's why he needs a boat. <laughs> Listen... He walks on water. He can teleport, though. He can use Chakra. <laughs> Clearly, he hasn't heard of River Shen. I have not. Read Swim's tweet. All right. What is Swim's tweet? What did, what did Swimothy tweet, chat? Yo, this new reveal is sick. This is actually probably the most fitting and thematic Ionian card ever made. It is every single thing Ionian cards are known for doing. One, gets you Shen. Two, works with Barrier. Three, gives your units double attack. Four, is absolutely useless. <laughs> That's great. Love it. Love it. That's that's fantastic. I expected nothing less from Swim, the man himself. Alright, let's think about this. Let's think about this. It draws you Shen, and he gives double attack to allies with barrier. 
Same problem misfortune boats have. Take the champ too long to level after drawing it so late. Well, Shen Shen levels up. Uh, yeah, but you you might have already leveled Shen to be fair. Overall, overall, I think this card sucks. But there will be some memory out there that has some very weird win cons with this deck. We are living in times of Ionia where you have cards such as such as Syncopation, uh, Shen Stand United, and you might be able to swap something into Lethal, like. Let, let's just say you play this dude on board, and then that's 16 damage to face if you can swap him with Barrier. That's not bad. And it's kind of hard to remove unless you silence it, because if you target it with removal, you sink a patient it out anyway. So, overall, that might be some kind of weird shenanigan OTK potential. Who knows, man? I have no idea. Maybe Shendarius? Yeah, I was thinking something similar to that as well. Maybe some kind of Shendarius deck would work. Who knows? Bright Steel Formation. Very scary to drop Bright Steel after this. So, yeah, of course. But if you hush it, it's still an 8 6, right? It's not horrible. And it drew you a card, which is a champion. Like, maybe it'll see some play. Not in current decks. There's no current deck that plays this. But there might be in the future. I love it. Swell Scroll Pog. Yeah, man, actually. All right. Cool set of reveals. I'm assuming tomorrow's is going to be better, though. You would be an awesome shoutcaster. I'd love to see Grotherns from commentating worlds or something. <laughs> it would be cool. Shoutcasting could be fun. I could see that. Names and gender will be mixed. Listen, chat, I would prep. You don't know how hard I would prep, chat. This would be... Listen, it would, it would go like this. I would, I would train for weeks to be a good shoutcaster. This would be the bulk of my training. Female! Male! You know, I, I, I would, I would I'd pop the cards and be as fast as possible. He! She! You know, and slowly but surely, I would get it ingrained in my brain. You know, slowly but surely. And then it would be like... Draven! No! No! no. And then, and then, when I miss, when I misplay, I would electric shock myself. <laughs> Darius, Darius, you know, I would, I would, I would, I would fix a chat. I would, I would get good at this. Listen, I would, I would make it work. I would have flashcards that would pull one by one. Whenever I make a mistake, electrocute. I would, I would get there and I would, I would be a good shoutcaster. I would train for this. I would not make these mistakes in live. That's some strange fetish. Listen, <laughs> it's not a fetish chat. <laughs>